everybody. This has been quite fun. Everybody coming out and just kind of getting a chance to sort of talk about their passions. It's kind of nice. Um, I want to talk to you about getting a degree. Actually, I want to talk to you about your degree, but I don't just want to talk to you. I want to talk to everybody. The administrators, the advisors, your support network, probably your parents. Because the simple fact is you're getting the wrong one. Now, I'm not saying that to be pejorative. I'm not saying that to be insultive. I'm saying that because that's what the numbers tell us. There's been a raft of research that's been done. It all sort of arrives at the same point. And what that point is, is that within five years of graduating, 60% of you, certainly better than half, will not be employed in whatever it is you studied. If you've gone into law, you won't be a lawyer. If you've gone into music, you won't be a musician. If you've gone into education, you won't be a teacher. Now there is some wiggle room. It depends on what your actual discipline is. But that trend continues. And it continues out to about a decade. And in a decade, it finally levels off. And what it tells us is, is that a decade out, 66%, two out of three of you, will not be employed in whatever you studied. And that's kind of a damning thing, because let's be honest, college is kind of expensive. It's kind of expensive. It's about $25,000 to $50,000. Now, once again, there's some wiggle room in that, I know. It depends on whether we're talking about in-state or out-of-state. It depends on whether we're talking about uh, private versus uh, public college. On average, this next year, when we graduate 1.9 billion people, that's just this coming spring, they are going to have an average debt load of about $30,000 to pay for their degree. The good news is that's all in, right? That's, that's tuition and room and board and books and travel and a little bit of miscellaneous expense thrown in. All in, it's about 30 grand. That's the average benchmark. Now, it seems at this point that I kind of have a downer on getting a college degree. And I don't. I actually advocate you do this. I'm a college professor, actually, b believe it or not, right? <laughs> I advocate you getting it. And I do that for one reason, which sort of comes in and mixes up this discussion that we've had just a little bit. That reason is the single largest indicator as to how well you will do in life, how much money you make, how well you rate your job, a host of quality of life metrics is single largest indicator is if you get that piece of paper or not. And that's, by the way, not you versus somebody else that's over at you know, East Coast or West Coast, somebody else. No, that's you versus every other iteration of you. You with a high school diploma, you with a GED, you with an undergrad, even the break between undergrad and postgraduate degrees. None is so significant as if you just get that slip of paper. And that can only lead us to one conclusion. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you get. It doesn't matter what you get. It matters that you get. See, the world that you're stepping into is different from what those of us that are the status quo, what we are preparing you for. And I'd like to change that. Let me give you a, a little bit of an example on that, right? See, what we term the greatest generation, those people that came of age in the 30s and 40s and sort of hit their professional stride through the 50s, 60s, and 70s, they could expect to change jobs twice, on average, 2.3 times if you're really sort of on the numbers. They could expect to change jobs twice in their professional career. LinkedIn did a survey Millennials, those are people that came of age in the 90s and noughts and are currently in the workplace, by the time they're 32 will have changed jobs four times, most of them with a career change at each job. This is a world that is inconceivable to the people that have set the system in motion, to the institutions you are now beholden to. And what I'm trying to tell you is, I can tell you two things about the world you're stepping into. We, as a planet, are addicted to technology. We just are, right? That phone in your pocket. I, I don't think I'm throwing stones, because by God, I love mine. Because of that, we're a skills-based economy. If you have a niche, if you have a skill, 
you will have a job. And that job doesn't have to make sense to those that are teaching you. That cell phone in your pocket has removed so many barriers to entry, gives you so much information, gives you so much opportunity, that once again, those that put the system in place didn't even account for. And as someone who prides themselves on living a life that, let's be honest, wasn't very linear, I think I can speak to this fact. See, when I was an undergrad, I was given a little bit of advice. I was always told, don't follow your passion, follow what makes sense. As have you. Don't follow your passion, follow what makes sense. And so I was always a double major. Now I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to make action movies like Jackie Chan. Once again, there were some barriers to entry for that. I don't speak Chinese, I don't make movies, uh, I don't take martial arts, and I'm not into gymnastics. But other than that, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So I always was a double major. That first one was the logical one, and the second one was the passion project for me. See, the first one was there when the second one didn't line up. And so, over the course of my undergraduate degree, I was a math major and an econo economics and accounting and education and philosophy and psychology and creative writing and eco. You can see where this went, right? Logic doesn't really apply to passion. And that's why I graduated with a theater pre-med degree. Because <laughs> you need something to fall back on when med school doesn't line up. Fortunately, it was there. I took that theater degree, and I ran away and joined the army. And I spent several years of my life jumping out of airplanes, putting my communication skills to good use. And when I got done with that gig, I ran away and joined the circus. For the last eh, two decades or so, I've traveled the world flying people on wires for a living. And from the outside looking in, that career path doesn't really make sense. But from the inside looking out, that career path really doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't try and explain it, I just did it. And that's what I want to put onto your shoulders today. You have a responsibility, as do we. We that are the status quo, that are in charge of the institutions of higher learning, we have a responsibility to prepare you for the world you are stepping into. It might not necessarily make sense to us, but it doesn't have to. You, by the way, have a responsibility in this dialogue. You have to play an active part as well. Because, and I'll paraphrase, Will Rogers, even if you're on the right track, you're going to get run over if you just sit down and wait long enough. Good luck with it. I'm Bill Alt. Good day.